Hi, and welcome to the latest episode of the Shop Local webcast. Today, we have three store owners with us from Big Frog and some of their favorite local small businesses. So if you don't know what the Shop Local support local all the way uh, campaign is that Big Frog is running, uh, we're really trying to reach out to our community and nominate small businesses that you love for a chance for them to win a $100 custom gear certificate at Big Frog. So if you have a local small business or own a local small business and you'd like to support local, go to our website, bigfrog.com slash shop local, where you can nominate your favorite local small business. Uh, we just really feel strongly about that, all of our individual Big Frog owners, that we need to help our local communities. And we'll be talking about some of the ways we've done that uh, over the past couple of years. So please stay with us uh, and please comment. So if you comment, you have the opportunity to possibly win a free shop local t-shirt, like I remember to show you this time, like this one. This is upside down. Yes. And so like this T-shirt. Uh, and so all you have to do is comment, support your local small businesses in the comments, and you can possibly win a free T-shirt at your local Big Frog store. So again, thanks for joining us. Uh, so today, I think we're going to start with Sean Mulligan from our Big Frog of St. Petersburg store. There you are. Hi, Sean. Are you muted? Oh, I can't hear you, Sean. Seda, May, what's happening? You want me to? All right, let's let Sean get situated. I think we're having technical difficulties. So now I think, uh, Tracy, are you there from Big Frog of Dunwoody, Georgia? Hey, Tina, how are you? Can you I'm hear me okay? I'm wonderful, Tracy. How are Yay. you doing? I'm really good. Good, yeah. you're looking good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> we hung up a banner over all the supplies. <laughs> and we're feeling fancy around here. Yeah, it is. Uh, the Big Frog stores are definitely hopping, no pun intended, uh, with <laughs> Christmas business. So I'm sure there's lots of boxes and stuff happening in the background. Exactly. <laughs> Which is a wonderful thing, right? Yep. No complaints. No complaints. Yeah. <laughs> so Tracy, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you started the Big Frog journey and what you love about what you're doing now? Sure. I think it's really, I wanted to challenge myself and grow and figure out ways that I could connect, connect more into the community. Um, after 20 plus years in corporate, it just really, I, I felt strongly that I could do my own thing. And I didn't want to start from scratch like so many of us. And Tina, you and Ron and the Big Frog team, what you've built and what you've created has, that was the connection. Like for me, the way you're a part of the community, the way everyone is engaged and let's be honest, making t-shirts is so much fun. It really oh my God, is. <laughs> it's so much fun. So yeah, the the journey was was easy when, you know, I went to my day at the pond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's great good um so i know you've been really active in supporting local street artists um as part you know as part of your community uh do you want to share anything else you've done locally that you feel yeah. strongly about we've done a couple things uh dunwoody nature centers uh a soft spot i love to hike i love the outdoors um so we do their staff shirts that get reduced pricing for all their summer camp, the the little bug camps. It's so cute. <laughs> We've done a couple things with um, like working with the city on the uh, ambassador volunteer program. And um, at the beginning of the pandemic, we <laughs> printed t-shirts with like, how to sew a mask and mask 
templates on it for people to pick up, you know, in a safe, secure location during lockdown. So if they knew how to sew, they could make masks for their friends, for their community, for their family. So we just, uh, we're so lucky to be in Dunwoody. I know. I remember, uh, if you don't know, Tracy is quite the seamstress. So <laughs> she has a special <laughs> talent there. Thank you. Um, so uh, in terms of uh, success, your success, and I know you're still growing, um, but what do you think a critical activity has been for you to keep that growth going? I think authenticity and growing connection, if that makes sense. So showing up every day, being authentic, not trying to, there's not a problem trying to sell, right? It's selling with integrity of who you are and the product you're going to deliver. And I think being connected with your team, with your community, making sure you, you show up and, and you're just there for people and with them in in the place they're at, if that makes sense. Connections really is such a strong thing for me. And when you see people connect all throughout the community and just how how much a t-shirt or a brand or a logoed item really can uh, I know it sounds corny, right? Is it corny to be like <laughs> kind of uh, sweet on it, but it mm -hmm. really can light up someone's day and it can grow them and grow their own business and how they're branded and showing up in the world. And I, I just love that. I love connecting people with what they need and being, I don't know, a conduit of that. Mm -hmm. we, we like to say never underestimate the power of a t-shirt. That's perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I like to say we don't cry over t-shirts. Sometimes we do. <laughs> yeah. yes. I like your saying a little better. Yeah. Well, excellent. So um, now I know people in your community actually nominated a bunch of local small businesses to win the $100 gift card yeah. or, or branded gear. And we have your winner this month on with us now, uh, yeah. Nicole and Dejavon from the Holistic Coalition. Hey. Hi, ladies. Hi, Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for joining us. Um, I took a peek at your website. I love the look and the messaging. It's really empowering. I really liked it. Thank you. Thank you. And I wanted to just say we love you guys. We actually got our shirts from you. Our shirts from you. Oh, very nice. Those are I lovely. Love that. <laughs> Thank you. Good job, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so why don't you guys, uh, as you can see on the screen, their names and their uh, business name is there so you can look them up easily. But why don't you tell us about the business and why you started it and what it means to you? Sure. Um, so my name is Nicole and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Um, and we actually started our business in 2016. Um, but I will say we really took off <laughs> the, the past couple of years, especially with the pandemic. Um, but our goal has always been to implement mental health services. I mean, we do an array of therapeutic services from young, young adults, um, sometimes children, um, adults varying from all types of mental health disorders, and then also providing other holistic services um, like body products, natural body products, and encouraging other modes of wellness so yeah we're private practice in atlanta i know that um all my nieces and nephews are experiencing all-time high anxiety after the pandemic and it's just a constant struggle so it's really great that you guys are out there for them mm -hmm. um so why don't you talk a little bit about any challenges you may have faced kind of building your business 
Well, like Nikki said, we started in 2016, so it's definitely been a journey for us, but with the pandemic taking off, there was definitely a need in the area for us to come and really make a presence in the mental health field. And so this year, we were able to really get into transitioning. Well, the challenge was transitioning from in-person sessions to virtual sessions. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, you know, a lot of people are receptive to virtual sessions. It took a little bit of adjustment for us because we like to be in the presence of our clients, but it seemed to be a pretty good adjustment for people to transition from in-person therapy to telemedicine, understanding how to use the systems and be HIPAA compliant and all those good things. Yeah. Is it just out of curiosity, is it, um, do you find it really helpful to be able to see people's facial expressions? So when you're, it's, you find it necessary to do that face-to-face virtual, or do you think you can do as well just over the phone? I'm just curious. Well, that's one of the things we were a little worried about when we were transitioning from uh, in-person to virtual. And that was really because we get to understand our clients really as we're in in person with them. So we can really feel emotions, we can sense things, we can, you know, be a little bit more curious. And so when virtual avenues have were opened up, it kind of made it feel a little bit safer. So you didn't just have the telephone. Because like you said, telephone doesn't really be, allow you to see the person and see mm-hmm. how they're feeling and see emotions that they may have that they're not necessarily able to communicate. Yeah. And I'll just add to that. Um, so the video sessions that we do we are able to see expressions. And I think it also adds to the convenience of it all. Of course. Uh, You know, versus people having to get in their car. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Atlanta, but traffic. Oh, yes. (laughs) Um, But the convenience of being able to just get on your phone um, and tend to your session or get on your laptop and tend to your session has really been helpful. So. It was an adjustment at first, but there's actually been a huge demand for telehealth virtual sessions because of the pandemic. So it's been a benefit in both ways. That's great. It's really important. I think you just removed a barrier for them, like having an excuse to get in to see you, you know, to get help. So I think that's fantastic. Just Mm -hmm. one easier way to get help. So that's fantastic. Um, I heard you maybe wanted to do a shout out to another local small business. Yeah. Yes. We're glad that you said you saw our website and that you liked it so much. Our really good friend is a branding expert, a branding consultant, and she did our website and she helps us with our logo mm-hmm. and a lot of oh. our branding. And her name is Tiffany and her business is called Boss Babe Branding. Excellent. All right. It, it is a beautiful, I did really like the website a lot. It was really well done. Thank you. So, <laughs> excellent. She amazing work. She helps us all, a lot along the way. And um, she's really breaking into the new aspect of branding and marketing, especially when it comes to social media and the industry. All right. And what's, her, what's the name of her business again? Boss Babe Branding. Okay. Branding. And she does web design, logo design. Um, she's the creative director. She helps with video shoots, photo shoots, all everything branding, wow. visual. So she's a one woman show and she's awesome. Excellent. So if anyone out there needs a little help with some branding and marketing, she sounds like the go-to girl yeah. or lady, I should say. <laughs> Definitely. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, and so remember, uh, if you, need any holistic healing uh, and some, you know, we all need a little mental health uh, therapy these days. Uh, Visit these ladies uh, and the website is phenomenal. You'll get a lot of answers there and congratulations on winning the hundred dollar team gear. You can get more cool shirts like you're wearing. Um, So thank you both very, very much. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you guys. We'll see you soon. (laughs) All right. They're awesome. All right. So uh, next we have Karen Cannon from Karen Cannon Real Estate. Hello, Karen. Hi, how are you? Great. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Say hi, Tracy. Hi, Karen. (laughs) How are you? Thanks for reaching out to me. I appreciate it. Uh, So Karen is just around the corner from our store 
Okay. And I wanted to nominate you for this interview. I probably should have told you ahead of time. But <laughs> as I think you have the best marketing oh. I have seen across Dunwoody. Well, Karen you. saying your name is everywhere. <laughs> so I, I wanted to learn from you. Like, I'm so inspired by what oh, you do. Thank you. That means that's that means a lot. It's I, working. Yeah. So Karen, do you want to tell us a little bit about your business? Yes. Um, we are an independent uh, boutique real estate firm. We specialize in residential uh, resale of homes and new construction. Um, and we specialize in Dunwoody, Sandy Springs in the North Atlanta area. Um, we offer, you know, a unique approach. So we're team based. So our whole team is really dedicated to our clients and their success. Um, we offer great marketing, um, not only for the brand, but especially for our homes and the marketing we do to list, you know, and, and sell our homes. Um, and we have uh, recently in the last year been nominated a best of Sandy Springs real estate teams and best of perimeter uh, brokerages. So I'm proud of that. And I've been in the business 18 years and uh, we've grown every year and it's been uh, wonderful to be in such a great community that has supported us. But uh, we love living here. My family, I've raised my kids here and my husband and I are business partners and we've been here for 25 years. And um, yeah. My husband is my business partner too. That so we'll have to talk about that also. <laughs> It all works. It is, it does, all yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. It's, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you want to chat about any challenges you faced as a small business owner? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I think um, when I started my business or we did, um, I had been in real estate a couple of years, but we started our own company in 2008 which was not the time to start a real estate company. I mean, the market had crashed yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was challenging. You know, we had to um, learn how to do things differently, leaner, um, but we grew every year because we offered something different and unique, but it was challenging. And I've learned all those lessons I've learned. I don't forget about every day. I remember mm -hmm. how hard it was and how much we had to work. Um, and what we had to offer our clients. And I don't forget that. Um, and my team knows that, that uh, is, it can be here one day and it can't be the next. So you have to appreciate what you have, but you have to work hard every day. Mm -hmm. It's very, very true. Yeah. So um, as Tracy mentioned, your name's all over the community. Uh, how do you work with the community? Have you had any special community efforts that your team has gotten behind? Yes, we do a lot um, and for the community over the years. And we have, um, uh, yesterday I dropped off a huge carload of toys for, um, we adopted a family through the Community Assistance uh, Center. And that was just one thing our team did to come together. And um, I was really happy just that, you know, I walked in and she said, wow, this family is going to have a great Christmas. And um, we were all, you know, we want to do those things, but we've also supported um, local schools, you know, for fundraisers, for races. We love doing that over the years. Um, the pandemic hasn't, we haven't done that, that much um, recently. Um, but I love to support local shops and restaurants. We like to buy locally. So when we give client gifts or restaurants, we use them. We partner with local um, places and, and restaurants to do events for our clients. So we're all about being local, not only from real estate standpoint, but just supporting the local businesses here. I think it's so important. And I, um, I love that this is being presented because we do need to support, you know, the local uh, communities and businesses, especially over the last year, you know, and uh, we do see some change in Domini Village with some new restaurants. And I think you're seeing an outpouring that people are ready to get out more and, mm -hmm. and support these uh, businesses. Excellent. And I did, uh, I, checked out your website too. And I saw your blog section. So I had a marketing question for you. Oh, sure. Um, how often are you updating that? And are you seeing a good return on doing blogs? Well, um, I think it's important. We usually put them in our newsletter, we put them on social media, and then we put them on our website. So mm -hmm. um, we do get good response and feedback from them. Um, you know, we update them monthly, Okay. Monthly, I think it depends. We're trying to be topical and, and certainly things that are important to people buying and selling homes in today's market. 
Um, so I do, you know, it's, it's an effort to do it. Um, you do want to, you know, you want to be valuable. You don't want to put things out that aren't valuable to our clients. Mm -hmm. We try to stay on top of that. I have a, a great marketing person and a great team that supports me to help do all that. Okay, excellent. And I had one last question for yeah. you. So how is new construction going with all the supply shortages and price increases? Yes. Yeah, I'm just, just curious. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I've um, I work with some local builders and, um, you know, their challenges, the prices are going up. Uh, there's still demand for new construction, but the cost is going up. The cost mm -hmm. to buy a piece of land and tear down a home because there's no raw land left around here. So it's all going to be tear downs in the communities that we serve for the most part. And, um, you know, the acquisition of those is getting more. The supply chain is a challenge, appliances and all kinds of things, windows, right. all, it's all hard to get. Um, and the cost is going up for it. But um, I think the rise of just residential, you know, uh, resale homes is going up and new construction is going up along with it. Um, but it, it can be hard. It can be a challenge for our, um, for builders that I work with. Um, I've been able to help work with, or you know, I specifically work with some really top local builders that uh they do it well but you know there's not it's not without challenges right now mm -hmm. for sure i was just curious okay yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right well thank you so much karen i appreciate you joining us today thank you for having me thank you tracy for nominating me i appreciate it thank you i appreciate you coming yeah That's hopefully awesome. i'll catch up with you locally soon thank you awesome all right well tracy any last thoughts before i let you go I just really appreciate you bringing everyone together. And yeah, I think it is time to be hyper local. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. <clears throat> thank absolutely. you. All right. Thank you, Tracy. I'm sure we'll talk soon. All right. So uh, behind the scenes producer, May, who are we asking? Sean. Sean. Okay. We're back with Sean. Sean. Hey. Hey, there he is. All yeah. right, Sean. I have no idea. I have no idea what happened. But I'm That's all right. But you know, <laughs> things happen. So Sean Mulligan is our owner of Big Frog Custom T-shirts and more of St. Pete. If you are watching, please go ahead and drop a message to Sean, uh, and you may win a T-shirt. So Sean, thank you for being here. Thanks for doing it. I appreciate it. So, Sean, let me see. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your Big Frog journey and what you like about your business? Okay. Um, well, prior to getting involved with Big Frog, I was um, I was in marketing and, and, and worked for a national marketing agency and um, worked with customers, clients, like all over, all over the country. But one of the things that I didn't do was I, I, I never really got involved or was in a business that allowed me to get involved in the city that I lived in. And mm. um, I've lived in St. Pete since late 80s and um, have always loved St. Pete. Um, there's always been this special vibe about the area. Um, but it wasn't anything like what it is now. And I saw the city growing. I saw the city just, you know, picking up and, and what used to be areas that you didn't want to be in, you know, became the areas to go and just this whole renaissance and the culture. And so I kind of wanted to get, get involved in what I saw happening in the community. And that's when I decided to, um, kind of branch out and, and stop what I was doing and, and um, talk to you guys and look at what would allow me to get more involved and in, in working with the community that I'm in. So that's how I got involved with Big Frog and it's been going great since. Good, good. Uh, do you want to share any specific moments about how you've interacted with the community? I know you're super involved now. Um. Well, you know, the pandemic, I mean, just probably like everybody, the pandemic kind of forced uh, everybody to kind of reevaluate, you know, your 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 business. Um, and I definitely saw a lot of reaching out from other local businesses, looking at supporting each other. And, you know, we were fortunate to get involved with um, a program where we were printing shirts with our, um, our our neighbors 
business neighbors, you know, logos on them and for every shirt that um, they sold with their logo on it, or we sold actually, you know, we kick them back all the profit on it. Uh, so cover our cost and, you know, it was, it was one of those things that, that um, I didn't realize how much it was appreciated um, by the other, by the other businesses that were involved in it. And I had a, a food, a guy that had a food truck, um, you know, and he just promoted the heck out of his shirts. And it was actually a really cool design anyway. Um, and we sold a ton of his shirts and he was almost in tears saying that, telling me how, you know, I helped him put, put food on his table when nothing else was coming in. So that, that was like a, definitely one of those um, special moments. You know? That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now we used your old marketing firm actually, so <laughs> I know what you did, but what marketing tactics are you using now to uh, promote your big frog store? Well, you know what? I, it's funny because you knew what I did before and it was fairly high tech and, um, but, but I mean, other than, you know, the digital Google ads and things like that and stuff that you help us out with, um, what I've really found for me is just getting out in the community and um, whether it's literally walking in, introducing myself to other business owners or getting involved with, um, you know, different nonprofit groups to help out. Uh, I'm involved in our um, um, business district association. Um, I'm the president of that. So I get to meet a lot of people that way. And it's just one of those things that, is it marketing? Yeah, I guess, but I'm just kind of put, you put yourself out there, you meet different people, um, and sometimes you just fall into a position where you can help people. So that, that's what I like doing the best, basically mm -hmm. just getting out in the community, meeting people, talking about what we do, and being there if, if they need us. Yep, I, I love it. I think that's one of the things all of our owners really love is just connecting with the community again. Right. Um, yeah, that's right. Great. I mean, who doesn't need, you know, who doesn't, we like we say, who doesn't need t-shirts or hats or hoodies or whatever? Everybody does. Yeah, it's not, it's not a hard sell. You know? Right. <laughs> you know, right. We don't have to bang exactly. down people's doors. And, yeah, so. and it's pretty easy to figure out, too. It's not a real high tech, you know, uh, a sale that you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's a shirt. So. All right, excellent. So you have uh, someone you asked to be on with us today. We have Joe Letts from Let's Go Diving here. Hi, Joe. Hey, folks. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so if you can't tell from the name, <laughs> it's a diving school and he schedules lots of cool trips for you. And uh, I didn't know you were down in St. Pete. We're about 45 minutes from you and my husband loves scuba diving. So <laughs> I, I'm interested in going to Bali, but we'll see. <laughs> there you go. We can, we can make that happen. <laughs> So Joe, thanks for joining us. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, about your business and why you uh, started it? Yeah, thank you. And uh, thanks to Sean for nominating me for the call. The, uh, the business started two years ago at a really, really great time, November of 2019. <laughs> um, and uh, the reason we started was uh, we'd been in St. Pete about eight or nine years. Uh, my wife is the president of the company. And uh, both divers, she's a patty dive master. And as we looked around the dive community here, we felt that there was a real need for something different in a dive shop. Um, we felt that there was uh, a possibility to create a shop that was a boutique in nature, uh, very high touch, high service, uh, one that didn't maybe segregate, if you will, people into boxes, whether you were a tech diver or a spear fisherman or what have you, we felt that there was a uh, there was a need to uh, connect with those from a very young age, 10, well, eight years old, we can do bubble maker programs, but anywhere from eight years old all the way up to 78 or 80, uh, we got many of our divers that are in their 70s. So we, um, we, we looked at it and, um, and then said, well, now where do we locate? So we, uh, as we looked around, we said, you know, we've got to find a spot within St. Pete that's fairly central. So we were lucky to get our spot at uh, 49th Street North and 30th Ave, right at the intersection. And 
you know, we, we also went out and said, we, we really want to be able to clearly communicate our message. And that is a message of inclusion and diversity. Because the other thing we noticed as we started our business was, where are the minorities in diving? It, it seemed to still be very predominantly um, male, but that's changing. Um, and it may be a little macho sport, you know? Um, and so we came up with our, our other tagline, which is deep down we care. And through that, we began our marketing and Sean did a great job of our, our shirts and, uh, and, uh, and, our, and our hats. And so we, we, we came out and strangely enough, well, not strangely enough, I think it, I think it was a need that we filled. About 60 to 70% of our clients are female right now. Oh. And, and it's just, it continues to astound me. We are a, um, uh, a woman majority owned business. Um, mm -hmm. Brenda is the president and we have our uh, other partner, Erin uh, uh, Langenberg. She's over in Miami area so that she covers the East Coast whenever we don't have a store over there, but her presence is there. And then when we need to do diving on the East Coast, uh, then we, we send them over and Aaron as a, as a PADI instructor as well, does most of our training. So uh, that's the why and, and the how, and um, we're really, really thrilled with the response from the community. That's great. Well, I just heard that it's not too late for me to learn how to scuba dive. So that's- uh, not, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Uh, so uh, do you want to share any specific moments uh, when your business gave back to the community since we're talking community today? Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we've had a couple of, uh, we, we, first of all, we, we, we try and then we don't try. It's important to us to be out there and reaching out to the community. And as such, we've worked closely with a local uh, group called Burn Ocean um, Conservation Group. Um, they do a lot of the cleanup uh, around Salt Creek and so on, runoff, plastic, cleanup and, and what have you. We worked with them last June on their Camp Coral initiative where they had a bunch of kids that were given scholarships. Uh, they, they came out and it was uh, between 10 and 15 years of age. So we had a, uh, a group of kids that we certified uh, and it was just an ama absolutely amazing experience to see these youngsters come on. In fact, some of them got certified before their parents and now their parents have become clients and they've uh, come through. Usually oh, wow. twice a year, usually twice a year, we'll work with um, the Coral Restoration Foundation down in Key Largo, on Key Largo, mm. and we'll we'll go down and uh, take a group down to do out planting. Uh, we'll we'll have a we'll have a coral restoration, a, a coral conservation program that we certify people as specialty divers, and then we're down there and we're we're working with them, um, you know, to literally out plant coral. Um, truth of the matter is, our efforts after about five years, seventy percent of everything we outplant is not going to be there anyways because the planet has changed so much, right. but it gives us it gives us an opportunity to introduce people to the plight of our coral reefs around the world. And they, mm -hmm. are, they are disappearing after millions and millions of years, we'll never bring them back. So that, that to us is a very important initiative. And we always like to say, you know, you should seek adventure and save the ocean. Because every time we go into the ocean, we're seeing what's going on where the majority of the population doesn't get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So hopefully as they come out of the ocean, they'll, they'll spread the word and, and uh, we'll be able to do more and more on the conservation front. That's excellent. I love, uh, I love Key Largo's. I, I snorkel, so I've been to the reefs oh. down there. <laughs> for sure. Good for you. It's beautiful. Um, yes. So uh, last question for you, uh, in terms of something that can make or break your business, what would a critical component be for your business? Yeah, I think I think there's one of the basics, basic tenets of any business, which is listen to your customer. And we heard we heard our future customers crying out before we ever even opened our doors. So we saw the need, we heard the need. It was coming through. The message was very very clear. <laughs> so on that basis, um, I think we came in as I say, November of 2019, and all of uh, March. Uh, excuse me, April, all of April of 2020, we just shut down as uh, as a, uh, I guess, a show of solidarity with with the community and not willing to uh, propagate the pandemic in any way. So mm -hmm. listening to the client and, and being really, really aware of it. I think the other, the other piece that is so important is to be aware of leveraging future growth. 
Um, I think a, a lot of businesses will get stuck in a fur lined rut and they'll, they'll just be comfortable and all around them things are changing, which is what I think has happened to businesses in our industry, Scuba, for the last 25, 30 years. They tend to get very comfortable and yet the environment is changing around them. And consequently, if they don't see that and they don't leverage the potential for future growth, um, that, that is a, I think it's a key mistake for the survival of any small business. I totally agree. Okay. Those are great pieces of advice. Um, I did have two additional not businessy questions for you. One, what's your favorite dive in the Gulf? Yeah. You don't have, you don't have to give me GPS coordinates or anything. Oh, yeah, I want to know that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll tell you, I like the Sheridan. Um, it's a little further out, but it's a, it's a nice wreck out there in the Gulf. Uh, a little deeper, 75, 80 feet. But there's so much more just within... 15, 15 miles out. And uh, the difference between Key Largo and of course here in the Gulf is Key Largo, they start the engines, they glide out and they're on a, they're on beautiful wrecks about four or five miles off coast. Here we've got to go about 15 miles, but the Sheridan a little further out is one of my favorites. And then any of the barges that are closer in 40 feet of water, you'll see Goliath groupers, six, 700 pound Goliath groupers all the time on those and uh, bait balls in the summertime. It's just an absolutely magical dive. Excellent. That's just asking for a friend. Okay. And uh, the, my other question, do you ever do the lionfish uh, roundups? Uh, interestingly enough, that is about the only species that uh, we feel comfortable spearfishing in, uh, out of our store. We haven't done the roundup as yet, but we are interested in becoming more involved with that. It's such an invasive species. Uh, we're happy to go out and slaughter all of those little guys out there on, the, on, our, on our reefs and around the area. But um, we, we focus a lot on photography in the store hmm. instead of the spearfishing side of things. There are other stores around that do spearfishing much better than we will ever do. And they've, they've certainly got the expertise. But we also notice that there really isn't anybody involved with photography in the area in a big way. So we have an, on, we have an on-site uh, photography, underwater photography instructor quite often over at the Blue Heron Bridge photographing all of the stuff there in 10, 12 feet of water and slack tide, you see seahorses, you'll see eels, you'll see everything over there. So we tend to focus on the photography side, but uh, lionfish, they're fair game. If we see one on a dive and I happen to have my pole spear, they're gone. <laughs> they're very good eating too. <laughs> they are, extremely good. All right, well, I look forward to seeing your TikTok channel with all of yeah. your uh, nature videos. <laughs> Well, we're, we're working on that now. It's part of our business planning for 2022. We're trying oh, to figure out how to, be, how to break into TikTok. <laughs> I feel you. <ya. laughs> yep. All right. Well, thank you very much, Joe. And thank you, Sean, thank you. for being here. Thanks, we Joe. really appreciate it. Thank you, Sean. Awesome. All right. So sorry, as a local, I was a little overly curious about the diving. So apologize for that. All right. So next we have our owner of our Big Frog store in Omaha. Hello, AJ. And we also, hey, how's it going? how are you doing? Doing good. Thank you. I'm sorry. I don't have a lot of fun diving out here in Omaha, but you know, we do what we can. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's all right. I have questions about tacos in a minute, so we're all good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, AJ, why don't you tell us about your journey with Big Frog? Give us your background, what you like about the business. Sure. So I'm, uh, I'm actually trained as a graphic designer. I've got a uh, bachelor's degree in graphic design. I've been doing it for over 20 years. So I think they say at a certain level, you become an expert. So some people have accused me of being an expert at graphic design, and I, I love it. Um, for the last 10 years before I, I came to Big Frog, I was actually the director of branding and marketing at a couple of companies out in Colorado. Uh, we ended up moving to Omaha for my wife's health. She was very sick out in Colorado, came to find out it was because of the altitude. And that is one thing that Omaha does not have a lot of is altitude. <laughs> so she's been doing really good. And when we moved out here, I kind of had a bit of a hard time finding some place to hang my hat. Apparently, I was a little overqualified. And uh, the previous owner, Travis, uh, took a shot and you know invited me to come in and interview for the graphic design position. And I, apparently, he liked what he saw. And so I became a graphic designer here at, at uh, Big Frog Omaha. Fast forward probably about a year and a half, two years, and Travis lets me know, hey, you know, I've been open for 10 years. I'm looking to try something new. I'm going to end up either selling or closing down. 
And in those two years, I developed a working relationship with some of the schools in the area, some of the uh, other small businesses, some churches, and I just didn't want to see this place mm-hmm. go away. So my wife and I kind of put our heads together and figured out, you know, we could go ahead and get this place purchased and keep her open and keep helping the community. And so that's what we did. And that was December of 2019, just before uh, the whole COVID thing. Before COVID. Came down. <laughs> yes. so it's, it's been an interesting trial by fire, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel that. Um, so uh, AJ's wife, Mindy, is very active in the business as well. So uh, do you want to chat about what I asked uh, Joe? What, what do you think one of the most critical things that you, that you do that can make or break your business in particular? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think the biggest thing, and it kind of touches a little bit on what he was saying, um, is customer service. Um, that's one thing that I am very proud of at our store. We, if you go check us out on Google, we have a ton of five-star reviews. Yes, you do. Um, the majority of the people that come in here absolutely love working with us. We take our time, you know, trying to understand what the customer is looking for, asking them questions, really listening. Um, and really the most important thing to me is, you know, making sure that the customer is happy. Um, I get a lot of people coming in from some of our competitors in the area saying that the owner or the person behind the counter was very rude. Uh, mm-hmm. that they just didn't get a good feeling they would never go back. You know, that's the last thing as a business that we want to have happen. So I think the fact that um, we do have such a high uh, five-star approval rating, on, not only on Google, but on Facebook as well, um, really speaks volumes. I agree. I think uh, the art of customer service is making a comeback, but it's still seriously lacking in, in our industry in particular. So It is. Okay, so um, tell me, because of course COVID was a huge challenge for you, but what other challenges have you overcome over the past almost two years or two years? Yeah. Yeah, coming up on two years. So um, I I think some of the challenges, at least for me personally, is going from the designer employee mindset to Mm. experiencing a whole paradigm shift to the the Mm. owner and, and that kind of a mindset, you know. It used to be that if something went wrong, oh, you know, the buck would stop at the other guy. Well, now that I'm in charge, the buck stops here, and I'm doing my best to make sure that everybody is well taken care of and that I'm doing things as, as correctly and as ethically and, you know, still trying to keep everybody happy at the same time. That's been part of one of the mm-hmm. biggest things. You know, COVID, unfortunately, it's, it's definitely, you know, hurt business. It's hurt our supply chain. But the only good news, if you can call it good news, is everybody seems to be experiencing that. So a lot of people are becoming, you know, more understanding that, you know, shipping has been delayed, truck driving has been delayed. There's a lot of stuff going on that's slowing things down. But most of the people that I've had the pleasure of working with have been pretty understanding. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so as a ex marketing, well, you're not ex marketing guru, but you are ex marketing branding person, uh, full time, uh, Mm -hmm. what kind of marketing tactics are you using now to grow your business? So I'm really doing a lot of, of playing around, trying some new things. Um, we didn't do a lot of, uh, marketing before I came on board. Um, since then I've, I've kind of started to do some more internet, um, marketing, as far as Google ads, um, trying to do have a more consistent Facebook presence. Um, but really the biggest thing that I find that helps us out a lot is that customer service, because with that amazing customer service, we're getting a lot of customer referrals. Um, we have a lot of re- repeat business. So I believe 60% of our customer base or our sales every year is repeat business, which is fantastic. It's excellent. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of, leaning towards those people and be like, you know, hey, if you know anybody that needs a, a fun t-shirt for anything or if any business, you know, is looking for something, you know, please spread the, you know, that's one thing about Omaha is we're very grassroots oriented, which is pretty mm. awesome. That's great. And and on that note, if you guys are watching, if anyone's watching this and you'd like to nominate or shout out to a local small business, please do so. And you could potentially win a t-shirt from AJ's Big Frog store. So. Um, great. So, AJ, I know we have the $100 uh, gear winner on the line, too. We have Julia Berger. Berger, Berger. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Tina. Hi. Hi, AJ. Hi, Julia. Thanks for being here, Julia. Julia is with 
Pivot Concierge Health. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, do you want to give us, and congratulations on winning $100 worth of cool gear from AJ. He's going to take thank good you. care of you. <laughs> yeah, we're excited. Thank you. Um, so again, drop a comment to Julia if you're on. Uh, but Julia, why don't you tell us, I know you're not the owner, but you're one of uh, the the amazing nurses there. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Pivot Concierge? Sure. Pivot Concierge is a clinic um, and we promote wellness through many therapies. We have the hyperbaric tank here. We have infrared. We have the lymphatic. Um, we do quite a bit of IV hydration now, which is really, I think, important that people are getting into. Um, we have our provider that has the compounds that she puts in the potassium, the chromium, magnesium. We do a lot of zinc, folic acid, vitamin C, and that's getting to be extremely popular with people not feeling well mm -hmm. post COVID or post flu, needing those extra vitamins and hydration. And we have got into Botox and we are doing the um, fillers also, which has been exciting for us to get started on that. And then we are offering primary care at the site. And that's part of the concierge concept is you call in the morning, you can get in any time that works with you through that day. So that has been a real positive people calling saying, I, I really need to get in. And no matter what, we get them in that same day or with the COVID, we have been doing a lot of virtual visits mm -hmm. and that way they don't have to leave when they don't feel good. We can still have our provider assess them and um, make the medical decisions from that point. How big is your practice? How many doctors are there? Um, we have one provider and then we have the medical director over her. Um, and it seems like lately things are really picking up with the IV therapies. That seems mm. to be, and the Botox is getting to be um, an awesome added feature to us. So we're really proud of um, what our provider's done and what she continues to do. Oh, that's great. Uh do you uh, want to share, you know, as you know, we've just been talking about the community and giving back. Sure. Do you want to share what uh, what you've done for your community in the last few years? As far as giving back to the community, I think Pivot's been a real strong staple as far as the COVID testing. Uh, we oh, still right. continue to test twice a day um, and we really do actually add to that also. We have some um, companies that work with us that we really feel with the combination of them getting in right away and us getting the test back within 24 hours. And it's the PCR test, so it's extremely oh. accurate. Mm -hmm. um, they're able to keep the COVID um, from spreading and they're able to get their employees taken care of immediately. So they call, wow. we get them in um, the same day. Um, unless it's an exposure. And of course you have to wait the standard CDC time for that. Uh, but we've been doing this and it has consistently, um, it kind of fluctuated, but now we're consistently on a rise. And um, it's really great for some of the companies who call um, that have 15, 20 employees. Um, mm -hmm. I know we have a company that had a lot of travelers from Canada um, that were coming in. And so we can get all the testing done at one site at one time and the results are back within 24 hours. Oh, that is amazingly helpful these days. That's it has crazy. been. A lot of the companies that have a lot of people that travel, and we do a lot of other of our patients that are leaving on vacation, and they have to have the COVID tests at a specific time for the mm -hmm. airline, and we're very accommodating for when they need to have those done. Wow, that's really great. It's. I think every city needs one of you for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so... Uh, we've also been talking about marketing. We have a lot of small business owners who'll be watching this on LinkedIn. Uh, do you can you tell us about what marketing tactics are are, are working for you guys right now? It really, we've spent very little money at the up to this point on marketing, and it's mainly by word of mouth. And our okay. clinic has certainly been growing um, at a very steady pace. And I think that the positive. Um, responses that we're getting and the feedback we're getting is from the services they receive and also how they feel when they leave. Um, convenience of getting in the same day um, when they've had a therapy. I know we've had one particular patient who actually slept <laughs> for the first night. People who've had the flu that actually feel hydrated when they leave here um, and they're feeling wow. like they are back um, to at least the ability to drive without getting dizzy. They're not dehydrated. So 
really marketing. Um, we're just beginning to work on that. Um, but I believe the word of mouth, in my opinion, from the people that have come in are so pleased with the services we offer. Hyperbaric has been extremely, extremely popular right now. Um, of course, they can get in um, right away. We also have the zero gravity chair, and that really helps as far as pressure massages. People really need that with the stress that they have. I mean, we all have stress, but people have it and take it in different areas. Some have it in their neck, some have it in their arms. And um, the compression lymphatic really helps with like um, water removal. We have a lot of athletes that come in for it afterwards. Um, helps with menstrual cramps, any of that, that we can help them with that excess fluid. And gains wave therapy. Um, and as I said, the sleep program, um, we customize a sleep program and it's facilitated by our provider. And then we also do the estrogen and the testosterone and hormone oh, wow. replacement. You guys are hitting everything. We are. And it's really <laughs> fun and it's expanding. It's just, it's so wonderful to see. And the positive results, that I think is what makes our job the best. Mm. You can see people really happy with their care. Now, uh, do people have to subscribe or can they just do individual treatments or do you want them to be the the month to month patients? You know, we've been doing a couple different things that we want to work with you to make sure that what we're doing enables you to be happy, receive the care that you need. Um, we do have a program and as far as membership, but we also do individual. Um, I know our employees that are associated with Pivot um, and through our sister companies, they get 100 free minutes a month. And that really helps um, those employees. Um, they also have the ability for, like everyone, to see the provider and to get IV therapy. Um, but we also have, when they come in, if you just want to try it, and we're welcome to have you come in, try it for 30 minutes, see what you like, see if there's anything that you prefer. Like you can try the hyperbaric tank, you can try the lymphatic, whatever works and what you want to try. We're willing to have you try it first. And then with the positive results you have, you can come back and we can work on what we can individualize for you for a program. Oh, that's, that's really smart yeah. and generous. That way you can see for yourself. That's great. And Laura also does weight loss and um, she does consultations as far as nutrition. And I think the positive from that is that you have a very consistent staff. You work with the same staff. They get to know you. They know your your likes, your dislikes. And we also combine that with a lot of the um, therapies also. It's our mm -hmm. sauna some people use for weight loss. Um, some mainly use it for the skin, but a lot of it is for weight loss too. Okay. Well, that is very cool. So if you are interested in any of that, you should definitely check out Pivot Concierge in Omaha. So yes. again, congratulations for winning the thank $100 you. for the free gear. And thank, thank you. you for supporting local. So we really appreciate Thanks. that. We'll call it anytime. We'll get you in and we'd love to see you. All right. Thanks so much, Julia. Thank you. All right. So AJ, now we have Rory Fulcher from Javi's Tacos. Hello. Oh, I think you're muted. Hello, hello. How are hello. you guys? We're great. I'm hungry though, but I'm too far away. So <laughs> I'm getting there too. It's uh, it's past lunchtime, so we're ready to get a get a big burrito. Awesome. <laughs> so thank you for joining us today. Um, I checked out your menu. It looks really good. And I'm sorry you're in Omaha, but you should get one in Tampa soon, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. We've had a few Flor Floridians request that we come there. So who knows? Maybe we'll be down there eventually. Okay, good. <laughs> all right. So why don't you tell us all about your business? Uh, why, you, when you opened, why you opened, uh, why you started it? Yeah, absolutely. So Javi and myself are actually partners. Uh, my wife actually used to work for Javi in a previous restaurant concept several years ago before actually my wife and I knew each other. Um, I've got more of a corporate marketing background. So I've been in the marketing industry for about 15 plus years. And uh, Javi had a passion for food. Uh, he'd worked for a larger major franchise restaurant organization for over 10 years and uh, wanted just to start his own concept, you know. Uh, we had had, a, had enough of his amazing food at his house. And we said, Javi, you need to start your own restaurant. You know, you need to go for it. Give it a shot. And uh, I obviously encouraged him to do that and offered as much help as I could just as a friend in the community. And uh, so we kind of formed a partnership. And I oversee kind of the branding, the marketing side of things. But really, Javi's the secret behind all of it, right? He's got an unbelievable uh, knack for making some amazing food. 
and uh, I've just supported more on the marketing side. And uh, we launched uh, last August. So as a lot of the same stories, you know, in the middle of COVID, oh. um, Javi figured, you know, hey, if we're going to start a restaurant concept, no better time than right smack dab in the middle of uh, the pandemic. <laughs> and, uh, you know, heck, if we can't get it through there, we won't make it anyways. But uh, we've been uh, doing very well. We've actually now opened up our second location. We've opened up a brand new 30-foot trailer that we actually drove to Florida to get um, from actually a, a group out of Florida that custom built that for us. We have a third store coming here next year and even wow. a potentially fourth store. So uh, we've got some pretty aggressive goals. And uh, honestly, uh, it's just been a, a lot of uh, local support that we give all the credit to, uh, which is why we're on here. We, we love what you're doing, Tina. You know, we love AJ being a neighbor at our original location. So we're all about the, the local community, giving back, supporting, and helping people understand the value of supporting their local business owners. That's awesome. Um, so what, on that note, what, what have you done with the community to support it during yeah. this whole thing? <laughs> yeah. So one of our big initiatives when Javi and I both started, you know, he's got an eight year old daughter. I actually have four children, eight and all under. And so we just wanted to realize that, you know what, we want to give back to the community, right? We've got young little eyes watching and hearing and seeing what mom and dad are doing. And so since day one, we wanted to really give back. There's multiple organizations here in Omaha uh, that we do partner with, that we do things to give back a certain percentage of every uh, person that comes in. You know, they can tag receipts. They can give back that way. Uh, we just did one with our local church doing kind of a fundraiser to help support their new playground initiative. Oh, nice. And so we did a big fundraiser there. And then actually we're going to head out here uh, in the middle of December to feed some uh needy community members, right? So different areas of Omaha that have groups that need um, maybe a warm meal during Christmas. We're partnering up with an awesome organization here on December 20th. We're gonna feed probably somewhere between 50 to 100 individuals um, in an area of Omaha that needs it. And uh, we're looking to really just do that. Continue to give back, be very philanthropic and just be mm -hmm. a blessing to the Omaha community. That's important. That's very important. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, so I have a question that you're not prepared for, but um, I'm curious what's in your guacamole. Oh, geez. Well, that's a secret, right? You'll have to come <laughs> to Omaha and try it out. But um, oh. <laughs> the, 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 the secret is really the fact that uh, Javi's been serving food uh, for many years that he loves to tell people that, you know what, it's stuff that I'm proud to serve my own family and friends. And uh, we're always making things you know, better and uh, making little tweaks and adjustments. So I think he maybe now has the official recipe nailed down, you know, a little, a uh, little over a year into having the concept, but uh, we, we can't share all the secrets to his, uh, his food quite yet. All right. That's fine. I didn't think you'd tell me. Okay. So uh, since you're a mar the marketing guy, uh, what marketing tactics are you using to really drive the word of hobbies? Yeah, I think the biggest thing I'll just say, and a lot of the previous folks that were on here all gave mm -hmm. really great content and really valuable tips. Uh, my biggest thing is just show up every day, right? Consistency, I think, is a big key. Um, so many people, I think they have a short-term mentality. Uh, they want to be successful tomorrow when really it takes a long time to really go from zero to, you know, the the, the glamour stories that we hear about, right? Uh, no, mm -hmm. one, no one gets a six-pack of abs in one day. Uh, nobody gets a successful business overnight. So uh, my big thing, like I told Javi, is it's just every day show up, right? Do the best that we can do. Um, you know, I've got a little uh, little friend that's going to join us, it looks like here. So my, my three-year-old is going to join us. Oh. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's like that. You know, every single day we want our kids to grow up and be a, a great, uh, you know, person in the community. But, you know, they don't, they, they, don't, they don't go from zero to successful overnight, right? It takes time to grow a, a, a well-rounded individual, a, a young child like my three-year-old. And it does the same thing with the business, right? So when it comes to marketing, um, we always look for the, you know, the, the quick things, the, the newest, hottest fads. You know, I heard uh, the other gentleman joking about the TikTok fad right now. <laughs> and that is important. You know, I think that is important to know about what's happening in the marketing world. But um, I think a lot of the other uh, guests already said it, right? Just be genuine, be authentic, be you. Mm -hmm. Be a great ambassador for your community. And, uh, and again, at the end of the day, you know what? Show up every day, be an honest, moral person, do your best, treat people like you'd want to be treated. And you know what? Long term, you'll build a very successful brand and a very successful company because you have that stick to and that long term mentality. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I love it. And we definitely preach the golden rule here at Big Frog. So I, I totally agree. 
All right. Well, excellent. So thank you so much. Since I'm not going to get any recipes out of you, I'll let you go. And uh, <laughs> I look forward to coming to Omaha and trying some tacos. Absolutely. Thanks, AJ. Thanks, Tina. Thank, yeah, you, thank you, Rory. All right. Thank you, AJ. Any last thoughts before we end our webcast today? Uh, just that uh, if you do come by Omaha, I will be more than happy to take you over to Javi's for some tacos. Ah, oh, I'll be there tomorrow. I'm just kidding. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make All a right. point. 2022. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from these local small business people. Uh, and remember to shop local, support local, and nominate your favorite local small business at bigfrog.com slash shop local, or use the QR code on the screen to go ahead and quickly nominate your favorite business. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more webcasts.